In the closet today, we are speaking with Emma Prestage from Emma's Atelier, and Emma makes all her own clothes. Yes, and my husband's as well. And your husband's as well. Mm -hmm. How amazing is that? Straight away, I feel very happy to be here. <laughs> um, and I love how, I just love how orderly mm -hmm. you are. Emma and I were just speaking before about how um, you like the, oh, you do, you have one, two, three, four, but you've got, <laughs> Emma's got six black bobbins mm. already wound, and there's, and there's nothing more infuriating than when you're sewing and you run out of bobbin, and then you've got, and then you've got to thread yeah, out your bob, bobbin and wind it up before you can start again, that is just so simple and mm. so brilliant. Yeah, I think as a maker, anything that will stop you from making um, is really bad. So that's why I had literally designed everything to be at my fingertips. So I can sit at my chair and go, oh, I need scissors. Oh, I need bobbins. Oh, I need thread. And it's just it's just there and it's easy and I don't have to think too hard and I get home from work and I want to do a few, you know, half an hour after yeah. dinner. Yeah. yeah. So would you, how often would you sew? Um, I would say probably 10 to 20 hours a week. Right. But some weeks, none. Yeah. So... Depends what you've got depends happening. Depends what I feel like um, doing and depends what I've got happening in my life. So, yeah. But yeah, I kind of consider it like a yoga practice. Um, and if you want to get good at something, you have to dedicate 10,000 hours to it. Yeah. So, um, I've been kind of sewing kind of in a routine like this for about five years. Um, so, I wanted to kind of dedicate time to get better at my practice. And yeah. Um, always like trying new projects to extend myself and to learn and to kind of improve so so yeah. where did you start learning what what was the um, impetus so the impetus was i moved to wellington about five years ago it's nearly our five year anniversary yeah. um and before that i was working as a curator in the arts giving to everyone else and because of that job i was working 60 to 80, 80 hour weeks and creatively i felt I'm very sacked yeah. and um, and I moved down here and didn't want to be in that industry anymore and I wanted to bring back my passion for making and for being creative and I didn't feel like painting but I needed clothes because well I was in such a different climate to Auckland yeah. so um, yeah I just had all this time when I was looking for a job and I thought why not this is my chance so yeah I started making I bought a desk I was originally and is sewing in random nooks in our apartment. I bought this desk and I bought a different sewing machine and kind of just started and then attended a class for the first time in my life and learned about seam allowances, and yeah. <laughs> which yeah. I didn't know. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I just kind of feel self-taught and, but I have attended a bunch of classes at places like Nate or Marion and Wellington Sewing Centre and online yeah and it's just there's so much that you can learn on, online now so it's one yeah that's amazing you yeah there's such a great community so you didn't um sew at all <laughs> in school um not really so i'd always kind of sporadically sewed um during uni holidays and things like that um <clears throat> but when i was kind of getting my work life balance figured out as it as a young professional, I, I found it really difficult to get that balance right. So, yeah. yeah. So did your family, anyone in your family sew? Like what, um, had you had an introduction yeah. to it and what drew you to it? Um, I have always, my mother and my grandmother are both like very creative people. So my grandma was New Zealand's first female qualified watchmaker. So wow. six year apprenticeship. Um, so she was very good with her hands and she was very good at making. Yeah not so much a great teacher of sewing yeah but um my mum taught me a few things when i was a little girl and i had made aprons and yeah things like that and she'd always have to drag me out of spotlight um because i want to spend hours there just padding everything yeah so, yeah. so um your wardrobe now what what percentage is personally made and what percentage is bought? um pro i probably have about five things that are purchased Apart, wow. yeah, the rest. So, I don't make underwear or sportswear. Yeah. Um, but most of it's handmade. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. So all this you've made? Yes. Wonderful. See, just walking here, I would have guessed that you didn't make the coat. Right. So tell me about the coat. Um, so this fabric is vintage. Um, oh, amazing colour. Yeah, I, I was totally drawn to the colour um, and the strokeability of it. Yeah. Um, it's quite an unusual colour, quite hard to wear actually, but um, yeah, it's a pattern from a, a Swiss pattern company, yeah. Sylvia Codigan. So I've made like three versions of this. My first version got worn out so much that um, I gave it to the old shop and I hope that someone else liked it, but in my mind it was a bit too worn out to wear to work. I love that you've got your own label. Yeah. For it. So I've got about four different designs. Um, and Paul's, it is... Paul's got his own design as one as well. So this is the same Oh, part. look at the lining. Yeah, so details from, from the it's, distance. It's, it's bears with a with a, um, bears and flowers. Bears and flowers, so and cute. I added a little chain yeah. to hang it. So. so that's the same pattern? That's the same pattern. So it's quite yeah. amazing to see. God, it looks so different, it's doesn't yeah. it? And it's quite fascinating because with Paul's clothes, um, he only has about six patterns that I work with. Yeah. But everything just looks so different. Right. Yeah. Oh, this is a beautiful one. The lining. I just spent a lot of time doing the seams. Oh my goodness. Um, That's dedication to your craft. Yeah. So I really like kind of adding beautiful details. So I added this lovely cotton linen the under bit there so it's it's like a nice present for yourself in a way yeah um it's a, li um, a linen a linen pure linen so it's lovely to wear oh my gosh and you know you'd be proud to just hang it on the back of a chair yeah so, absolutely so you can see your fine seam work yeah exactly it's wow. nice it's nice to kind of wear works of art in a way yeah yeah so i feel like I have a st really strong, I really love having a strong connection with what I put on my body. Yeah. Um, and I really love, you know, the fact that everything fits my body and I don't have to make my body fit the clothes um, that are available. Well, it can be so disheartening buying off the rack and uh, you yeah. think, what's wrong with me? But it's what's bizarre wrong with to me? think that just a, you know, that, that you could buy off the rack and it would fit the majority of people is yeah. kind of a weird kind concept. Kind of a weird concept. Oh, this is like a little top. Yeah, I was just going to say, that looks really interesting. Yeah, interesting. so that was all oh, French themed. Um, I made it for, there's an event in the song community called Frock Tales. Yeah. Um, so for Frock Tales, I wanted to make kind of an outfit that I would That's wear gorgeous. again and again. So I'll just give you that and I'll show you mm. another bit. So I made a jumpsuit, which um, I'm hoping to wear a lot this summer. And it has a belt <coughs> as well. And that went under. Oh, under, not over? Oh, oh sorry. Under. This went over yeah. the jumpsuit. So it kind of oh, looks cute. like a swishy skirt. It was really fun to wear. And they're quite sparkly shoes. So. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. It really matters to me to, to make things like this that I can wear with jeans. Or, yeah. you know, this can be, you know, worn with like a little Komodo jacket to barbecue. Or, yeah. So I kind of think about. And this really lifts it as well. Yeah. It, looks, it looks really elegant. Yeah. So I worked with a stylist um, last year. Yeah. He did my colours and um, talked to me a lot about making your, thinking about your wardrobe as an orchestra and how you needed to have like high notes and low notes. And, and so I kind of was thinking about that and designing my outfit from Proctales and thinking, this needs to be my high note and this needs to be just kind of the boring basic that you have underneath, which is still beautiful. Yeah. But this is the, the piece that people go, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Oh, what an interesting, interesting way to look at it. Yes, yeah. I thought so too. Yeah, so I, if you can see, my colours are quite, you know, going back to the stylus, my colours are quite cohesive. Yeah. Which. There are lots of blue tones. Lots of blue tones and then the pinks like really tie in. So mm. it was really helpful working with a stylist because then I was you know being really considerate in what I was making and I wasn't making things and then going oh that doesn't look right yeah because I I had a few things that I'd spent hours and hours on and they just had to go the, 
go to the op shop or you're given yeah. to a friend or yeah. because it just didn't look right on my yeah. skin and I'd spent yeah. you know, hours making it. So yeah. your husband, Paul, mm -hmm. you make all his clothes as well? Yeah, pretty much. Like he he buys a couple of things, um, but yeah, he, he loves to wear Emma's Atelier and he's actually got his own brand as well. He's a brand ambassador. Yeah, he's, he is a brand ambassador. So he's he also has his own label which is Cactus Fashion. Yeah. So his clothes either have a Cactus Fashion label or a Emma's Atelier label depending on the vibe of the garment. Yeah. So this one is a funky, funky garment with little gnomes. Oh, so, so, so this belongs in the Cactus Fashion family. Um, so yeah, oh. and you can, it's quite cool because you can see these are all made with the same pattern, all these sweaters, but you know, they all look so different. So this one is oh, oh, such a boy. Nice. <laughs> um, so this one's made with like a lot of fabrics that have got second hand. Mm. Um, so you can see, you know, I only had so much of this, so I pattern matched it, I uh, color matched it with, with this one. Yeah. Um, so the raglan sleeves. Raglan sleeves. So they're all raglan sleeve, um, but we've just done different things with them, and it's quite amazing to see what you can do with one pattern. Oh yeah, because here, like you, some of them, the, you've got the raglan in a different different color, complementary color, and then here, same fabric. Yeah. Yeah, it looks dramatically dramatically different, and it's you know you can see how much this one's loved. The tag is completely. One out. Really interesting <laughs> choice of, of patterns. Yeah, so he works in tech, so he is he just wears these to work and right. and everyone gets jealous of his Poison. <laughs> so yeah, he never used to kind of dress flamboyant like this. Yeah. He would always wear quite like plain clothes. Yeah. And um after I made him his first garment, it really he was like, Wow, actually Dressing can be really fun. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> you know, it just it's a revelation. It doesn't. It, they don't have to be just clothes to cover your body. It, they can clothes can be fun, and yeah. So we we try and put like make fun little choose fun fabrics. And, yeah, there's two that just caught my eye. <laughs> and oh, the cactus one, cactus. Yeah. So this is why we call his label cactus fashion on this shirt. It's really pretty fabric. Mm. Pretty. Beautiful fabric. Yeah, so we always joke that anything that a toddler would like, Paul would like. <laughs> <laughs> and whales. And whales. And then we've got little cats, because he loves cats and ice cream. So sometimes he things the shirts to go with um, with what he's doing in that day. The and match, matches perfect, them to his shoes. The perfect summer tea. Perfect summer tea. Cats. Wow. So this one's a bit extra and um, I saw it on a Facebook, the fabric on a Facebook group and kind of seen him a photo going, oh my god, who would wear that? And then he, he showed his friends and they, they were like, you should get your wife to make that. And I was like, well, if you're game enough to wear it, I'll make it. And does he wear it to work? Um, he's worn it, he generally leaves it, wears it to his leaving dues. So he's he's changed jobs twice so he's had it's had two outings right yeah <laughs> he likes to have fun with his clothes i met mean, recently made him this which uh, we're still finding sequins all over the house um so this one is a mermaid sequin so it's quite fun you can just oh he, he, yeah. he wore it for his leaving do and wow. at courtney place at 2 a.m in the morning you have to be pretty used to people coming up to the street and stroking you. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah it's, it's a fun piece so oh good on him yeah he loves it there's it not too really many close. kiwi men that mm -hmm. um that would be comfortable dressing mm, like yeah. that and it's just so great to see yeah it's really it's really fun and you know like i've even customized his jeans i've made him these jeans um so he works in ruby on rails yeah um which is a programming language yeah so i this is the ruby gem Oh, or, or co yeah. the coating. So yeah. I added that like little detail in the red because that's the color of the ruby. Yeah. Um, and then oh, look at the pockets. I've added beautiful pockets because his favorite artist is Van Gogh. Yeah. So um, added the pockets to kind of because they reminded me of Van Gogh. So every time you know you go to the bathroom, you have these beautiful details that you don't get in ready, ready to like wear, and it's secret. like a little secret. And it's like 
hey, your wife loves you. Kind of like, oh, <laughs> oh, this yeah, bigger than a nice, to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> but I made him this jacket earlier this year. Wow. So that was quite, quite um, tricky to sew, actually. Gosh, I can imagine because the fabric's quite stiff. heavy and stiff. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's nice and gets a lot of use, like on really cold winter days. Is it water resistant? It is. Yeah. It does repel mm. water, so that's really good. He lives in a bomber jacket that I've made him. And mm. this is like a button-up shirt which has little cat buttons, so oh. um, and like liberty trim. And this oh, your attention to detail is amazing. Thank you. And yeah, I um, I really like to add like beautiful details. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. It's just a way to kind of improve your craft. So. Stunning work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Emma. That's amazing. And if people want to follow you, it's Emma underscore Atelier or Emma's underscore Atelier, Atelier. on Instagram. Or um, I also have a blog where I write in detail about lots of my makes. So that's um, Emma's Atelier dot, um, dot blogspot.com, I think. But if you search Emma's Atelier, it will come right up. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you. It's ju I'm just so inspired after seeing the water. Oh, thank you. <laughs>